Hello everyone, this is Real World Audio. Please like and subscribe so others can like and subscribe. And today our topic is why do horn speakers get such bad reputation? Because all you hear online is that horns suck because the color of the sound is just really, really, really bad. And uh, other technologies such as ribbon tweeters or soft domes or hard domes are so much better. So what is the truth about that? What is my experience? Because uh, everyone can define a truth for you. But what's the experience behind when they do their definition so the problem with horns is that they are ultra efficient and that reveals every uh, deficiency that you have in your loudspeaker i mean not your loudspeaker your loudspeaker as well but in the rest of your audio system so if there is anything wrong uh, like your cablings don't match your system uh, your uh, source has problems, your amplifier has problems, even your loudspeaker placement has problems or your loudspeakers do not match your room, everything will be magnified. And it's because they reveal so much of the dynamic content of the music that you are going to really, maybe the first time in your life, hear uh, what is dynamically recorded, what is truly recorded in that music. And of course, if there's a flaw, people start to blame the horn because they have not uh, noticed those flaws before, but it was because when you use a less efficient reproduction method, it will not reveal you those problems. So here we are. When you increase the cost or, and the effort that you put into making uh, a system component, let's say a loudspeaker, then there is a curve of quality. So you go from here, there's an insufferable, poor quality, and then quaint, mediocre, okay, stellar, and stratospheric. And, and, and when you look at how many equipment how many pieces of equipment belong to that category, you will see that the majority of audio gear could be described as somewhere between mediocre and okay. There is a relatively few quaint products and, and very, very few as insufferable. Also, there is much less uh, stellar quality that reproduce stellar sounds quality. And in the stratosphere, which I would... Uh, um, call as something that that is you totally love and it you feel that it's the best thing since sliced cheese there's also very little of those equipment and most of the equipment falls in this uh, curve so the majority that you get which includes like ribbon tweeters and uh, dome tweeters most of the loudspeakers using them fall in the mediocre to okay category. So when you listen to them, you will have a decent experience. However, for horns, the curve is very different. The vast majority will fall in the insufferable range. And, and uh, that's because it is a technology that requires much, much more skill level to employ than any other uh, tweeter technology or loudspeaker technology. And that's because it shows everything ruthlessly. So you do not have a leeway to operate in the dark. The truth is revealed. The emperor clothes can be seen. Uh, so that's why it's happening and that's why people have generally so bad experience with horns because there is no hiding with them and and there is no hiding in at two levels one of them there is no hiding of the weaknesses in your stereo system so from your source through the amplifier 
and and I have to say unfortunately that uh, it is very rare that someone has a system that does not have flaws in it and I mean flaws not just weaknesses and when you have a flaw even if you have a stratospheric quality horn loudspeaker you will get an end result with you crying in tears because the it will suck and not because of the horn speaker but because of the errors that are finally revealed to you and there is the second component of why horns can suck is when the horn was not designed properly in that loudspeaker and that happens uh, many many times and the prime reason for that is that uh, the crossover is not done well i will not get into detail why this is happening but here is the root of the cause is that the super efficient horn compression drivers um, which give us the high frequencies and in many cases they go down to the mid-range like for example when you look at Klipsch speakers like a Cornwall then even the mid-range is reproduced by a horn which, which is really a compression driver coupled to a horn the horn itself doesn't make any sound it's just an acoustic device it's like a gearbox that shifts gears between your room and your compression driver. But in the case of uh, uh, these loudspeakers, the mid-range and the tweeter are very efficient. However, the base unit in your Klipsch cabinet is orders of magnitudes lower efficient than the compression drivers. And to make them work together requires uh, extreme effort and much better uh, crossover design techniques than for low efficiency loudspeakers. And that's because in this range you cannot just rely on numbers anymore. You cannot just rely on TLS uh, small parameters anymore and calculations and predictions and computer algorithms you need ears so those speaker people who are the engineers designing horn speakers they uh, it to have good hearing is mandatory for them if you have good hearing and you design horn speakers then you will reach your goal if you just take the engineering route and you just use mathematics to design them you will never ever reach uh, an acceptable compromise and that's because you can't because there are additional parameters to sound that we have not identified yet we do not know all of the qualities that make up good sound versus bad sound we can measure certain parameters of the sound but those parameters really they don't do anything just help us troubleshoot they do not give us any indication what's the difference between acceptable sound and exceptional sound they give us indication between acceptable sound and intolerable sound but and they also give us indication whether your equipment is broken or is functioning as intended but they do not give you any indication that that intended functionality does it have a good sound or not so i hope this uh, helps all of us to really appreciate more how equipment matching works and why uh, there is a general lack of uh, good opinion about horns. I can tell you guys that when horns are done well, then you will never ever uh, guess that it's a horn loudspeaker because it doesn't have any horn coloration that you 
associate with bad horns. So when you hear something that is a horn coloration, it's not because it's a horn loudspeaker, but it's because of a badly designed horn loudspeaker. You hear the bad things that come with it. I have heard several horn systems in my life which were absolutely superb. And one thing with them is that uh, if you close your eyes and they don't tell you what you listen to, uh, there is no indication from the thoughts that you are listening to a horn loudspeaker. Yet you can instantly spot a horn loudspeaker because they give uh, such an immediacy, such a life and dynamics that and uh, it just sounds so natural that uh, your brain will have uh, trouble adjusting to it, to that, uh, that level of uh, naturalness, if you are not used to it before. So, thank you for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.